Well, hey, everybody. It's 3 p.m., and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. And I have missed you. Mwah! I was away. I was in Park City for a wedding over the weekend, and it was absolutely a gorgeous wedding. And it was wonderful to be up there. It was wonderful on some level, I thought, to get out of the heat, but go figure. We left on Thursday, and that weather system that was here on Thursday and Friday hit Park City on uh, sun Saturday night for the outdoor ceremony. So it got a little bit cold and windy. Hey, Mom, how are you? And um, But Sunday morning, we woke up to a snowstorm. It looked like a winter wonderland. The snow was just coming down so fast and so beautiful. And uh, the ground was covered. And I thought, oh, my. You know, we don't have a four-wheel drive to get out of Park City in, uh, but we went back to sleep for a little while and then woke up and decided to decide how we were going to handle the snow in Park City. And when we got up and looked outside and opened the drapes, the sun was shining, the snow had completely melted, and you had no idea that a snowstorm had just passed through just hours earlier. So it was absolutely gorgeous, and I took a video of the snowstorm. Hey there, Marcy, how are you? Marcy Tosher is here, thanks for being here. Everybody's starting to find us now. So after the show, I'm gonna, um, if you're interested at all, in a winter wonderland in May as it's heating up to 90 degrees here, you might want to see um, what it looked like snowing yesterday at 6.30 or seven in the morning in Park City. So I will post that in Gather with Nanny Bubby. And I'm also going to um, post this recipe, the Herb Cur La Creme. Um, and hey, Laura, thanks for being here in Gather with Nanny Bubby as well, or it may be there already. I think it's there already, come to think of it. So let me tell you, tomorrow evening, early in the evening, I'm having some friends. Hey, Lisa, I'm having some friends for dinner. And so today I am making this herb, uh, Cor La Creme, for an appetizer. It sounds so elegant and all kinds of things go in it. And there's a little bit of a complication to it because it takes 24 hours to set. Um, so we're going to start first with my telling you that the first thing that we need to do is get a sieve or a curl of creme uh, plate. And so I'm going to show you this is a curl of creme plate. And you know it or um, serving plate mold it's called a mold a curl of creme mold and you can tell that it's a curl of creme mold because of the holes in the bottom and i suppose it would be really great to make this one in the um, heart-shaped mold but it's not valentine's day and we're really not celebrating anybody you know for any special reason so then i go from the mold into just a sieve you can see just a sieve and i line it with a damp let me get the, the cheesecloth, uh, damp cheesecloth. And that will serve as a mold, as a curl creme mold. Now, the thing about it is, is that in this bowl, it is going to drain for 24 hours. And so little by little, every few hours, I'll go and grab it. I'll, t I'll dump out the water and then I'll go and put it back into the refrigerator. So that's what you want to do. Start with a sieve. And if you are starting with the mold, then you want to put it on a deep plate so that every once in a while you just take the plate, dump out the water, and that will be it. So this is the first thing we do is line it with the cheesecloth. And the next thing we're going to do is in here is 12 ounces of cream cheese. So let me just show you what is already in here. There we go. You guys see that? There we go. Okay, you got that? All right. So we're going to turn this on. Where is my turn on? <laughs> Backwards here. And we're going to whip the cream cheese. Now this is room temperature cream cheese. And we're just going to whip it until it's soft and smooth. I'm going to take it down and I'm just going to um, press it down from the sides. Boy, it's been a long time since I have worked with a hand, uh, not a hand mixer, but a stand mixer. Okay, back on. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and now we're going to pour in one cup. Let me just pour this down. There we go. And we are going to slowly, well, actually, 
I'm not going to put the cream in yet. Before we put it in the cream, we are going to go ahead and we're going to start chopping our herbs that we're going to throw in. And we should throw it in all at the same time that we're also throwing in the, um, the cream. I don't want to do it ahead. So I'm just trying to get you set here. For some reason, I can't get a good angle. There we go. How's that? Can you see that? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know why I can't get it. There we go. Maybe. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. Nope. Oh, maybe. Okay, there you go. I won't fiddle with it. I think you can see. So we're going to use these herbs in here. And also, at the same time that I'm making these herbs and throwing them into the Cora La Creme, I'm making salmon for dinner tonight. And one of my favorite salmon recipes is a poached salmon with these same herbs. So I'm going to show you how to make a main dish and an appetizer with the exact same herbs. Interestingly enough, this is salmon for us tonight for dinner. Tomorrow night, I'm actually making this uh, curly creme as the appetizer. And then do you remember that white fish halibut that I made last week? I thought that was good enough to serve to friends uh, and company. So I'm going to make that for tomorrow night as well. So, okay, let's dive in. Let's take two scallions and we're going to cut these really, really fine both the white parts and the green parts. So I don't like to take a big bite of scallions or onion or shallots. I don't even like a big bite of garlic, though I like the flavors. So I am going to mince these a bit so that they can spread very nicely into, there we go. Okay, that's about it. And I'm going to mince these, just chop them up and get them all ready to go in once we put in the cream. Just lost a scallion, rolled right off. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's good enough. Now we're going to, nothing big there, everything is small, it's gonna just blend real nicely into our curly creme. Now we're gonna take my favorite cigar rolling basil, right, roll it like a cigar, Let's find some big leaves. I had them in here. Let's see where I, here's one. Here's a huge, couple of huge leaves. So we'll do two. So we'll just pile this right on top. I think you can see that. Let's see who else is here. Lisa is here. Laura's here. My mom is here. So great to have you guys all here every day. I miss you guys on Thursday and Friday. Um, but Tom and I had just a beautiful time. We went to some fabulous restaurants in Park City. We went to a restaurant called River Horse on Main. And I believe it was at one time owned by um, Robert Redford. And it's a Michelin restaurant, a five, five Diamond Award winners. And it really was absolutely great. They had a wonderful guitar player in there that looked like Ed Sheeran and was playing some great songs. It was very romantic. Um, so that was very nice for us as well. And then Saturday night, we went with friends. So Thursday, or excuse me, Thursday night, we went by ourselves. Friday night, we went with friends to Chamayo, uh, which is a Southwestern restaurant. And I am here to tell you that I don't think I've ever had a better meal in my life than I did at Chamayo that night. It was so delicious. Company was grand as well, so maybe that's why I felt that way, but it was amazing. So I just rolled this like a cigar, and, um, and my mom's saying hi to everybody. So everybody say hi. Hi, Marla's mom. Hi, Adrian. Okay, and you can see how great that is. So I'm just going to cut those just in a little crosswise to get a few small chiffonade pieces. And then for my salmon that I'm making in just a little while, I'm going to roll these. Again, I'm making the salmon tonight for us to eat, and then um, I am going to use these herbs for what we're having tonight for dinner. We're eating a little bit light after the weekend, you can all imagine. Okay, so I'll put that over to the side. Now, let's chop up the parsley. So I have these beautiful, look at these. These came out of Nanny Bubby's garden. Can you see this? This looks like... Isn't that amazing? So I have everything from this older leaf of parsley and right down to these little baby parsley leaves. Ah! I almost 
almost lost a toe. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was that was scary. Hold on one minute, let me rinse this. <laughs> Can you imagine? Nanny Bubby stabs herself while in the middle of cooking show. Okay, so I am going to take the <laughs> wowzer. That was a scary move. I am going to take these little tiny small leaves and just pull them off the stalk. And I'm gonna roll them the way that one normally rolls um, the basil to cut it. And let, because I've never seen a parsley leaf as big. Have you seen a parsley leaf ever that big? Look at that. Look at how tiny this one is in comparison. And here is the new babies. So I'm running out of parsley just because I use it so much. I have to give it a break and let it grow. So, okay, here we go. Let's see if we can roll this into the bigger leaf and cut it up like we did the basil. So just playing around, but it looks like it's rolling. Look at that. Do you see it? Look at that. Look at that. Okay. How fun is that? Here we go. Wow. How easy was that? Okay, let's get a stem out and we'll just do some more chopping on that. So on the curl of creme, this calls for like a tablespoon of parsley, a couple tablespoons of the basil. It calls for this, um, oh, there's a leaf, parsley leaf got away. Let's get it back in there. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then now what we have is the dill. You just need to kind of gather it up and thick cut it. There we go. So what I loved about this wedding, I have to tell you, is that the wedding was in a location, a, a wedding venue that was about 12 miles out of town. And so everybody had to take a bus that actually picked us up at the hotel. And what I thought was really fun about this for any of you who are, hey, Teresa, how are you? Um, anybody who is planning a wedding in the future, what I thought was amazing is that you boarded this bus. We had to board at like 415. And then you went to the wedding venue. The ceremony was outside and it was very cold, but it was nonetheless a beautiful wedding. And then you went inside and the reception went on. And here's two things that were great about that. Number one, you knew you were boarding the bus to come home so you could drink and feel free that you didn't have to manage yourself um, the way that you do when you're driving. So there was that. And number two, um, nobody left early. So everybody literally had to stay until the buses left at 11 o'clock. Everybody had to to make fun, otherwise they'd be stick in the muds, right? So everybody, nobody left. Hi, Arlene, everybody stayed. We danced like crazy. I can barely stand today, I will tell you. Great music, you know, all the, you know, all the latest hits on Sirius were being played, which was awesome. Um, all the Macarena and the electric slide and the to the right, to the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, to the left, what's that called? Um, Megan knows. I don't know, but they played Cuba that. Shuffle. What is it? The Cuba Shuffle. The Cuba Shuffle? Mm -hmm. Cuba or Cupid? Cupid. Cupid Shuffle. Yeah, Cupid Shuffle. Because it was a Cuban wedding, so I was wondering if it was Cuban Shuffle. which is <laughs> So there was that, and we did that, and then we did line dancing where, you know, everybody had to get in the line. And we, we were dancing fools. The, the, the husbands were drinking fools. So all the girls were dancing, all the husbands were drinking and smoking Cuban cigars out back. So there was that. Um, they might not have been real Cubans because we're not supposed to have those, but they called them those. So that's okay. Um, and then, uh, and then what was really cool is at the end, when we were called to go load the buses, we went outside and they lined the outside with fireworks and the bride and the groom were behind barn doors, um, inside the venue. And then all of a sudden there was like a, a countdown by the wedding planner, whomever it was, and the barn doors open 
out walked the bride and the groom. The, the fireworks all went off. They were just shooting from the ground up in the air. We were standing behind that and everybody was applauding and yelling and saying goodbye. And they took this walk down the fireworks. Everybody was shooting pictures. And so the point is, is that when you take people like 12 miles away from their their cars and they can enjoy a wedding, they just have to stay there till the end, which makes it very, very nice for a couple. So uh, I had a great time. There were a couple other people that were counting down the hours, but <laughs> I was not one of them. Um, it Well, was it in Hebrew City or in Camus? I have no idea because it didn't say, it. you know, it didn't say now leaving, you know, Park City, Utah and heading into Heber uh, or the other one just be, and also too, I wouldn't know the difference if it did. I was busy talking to God knows who else in the bus. Okay, so, all right, ready? Let's go. We are going to take one cup, which is where? Here we go. All right, one cup of heavy cream. And by the way, this recipe is already posted in Gather with Nanny Bubby, so you can find it anytime you want. So we are going to slowly add the cream and hope that it catches. Not so much. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to stop this and take the spatula and just get this down from the sides because that happens quite a lot. So this is a whisk attachment is what we're using. And I'm going to have to turn it up just to get all this cream cheese out of the whisk. It will fly in the bowl. So let's do that. There we go. Okay. From now on low, we are going to add, there we go, okay, let's call it out. We need a quarter of a teaspoon of oregano, and it's dried oregano, and the way that you add dry oregano is that, you, hey, Lene, um, is you rub it between your hands, it releases all the oils, and we'll get that in there. Just a little bit more, rub between the fingers, Good camera work, Megan, that's awesome. Okay, and then from there, we're going to go back to the lemon. We're gonna add a tablespoon of minced scallions. So here we go with a tablespoon of the minced scallions. We'll save the rest to put on top of the salmon I'm having tonight. Okay, there goes the scallions. We're going to do two tablespoons of the fresh dill, which is right here. One and a half and another half. Okay, let's see if we can turn that just so they can see the bowl. There we go. Okay, doesn't necessarily have me. Okay, um, two tablespoons of the fresh chives. One, two. Okay, this is uh, the parsley. Let's see how much parsley. Uh, fresh dill, chives, two tablespoons of parsley. No, I can't remember which. This is the parsley. Okay. One. Two. And where is the basil? Chives. I do not see the basil on here, but I'm throwing it in nonetheless. There we go. Okay. That's it. Now we are going to, let me just turn this up to give it a better, okay, we're going to turn that off, and what we're going to do is we are going to pull together the zest from one full lemon, and then we are going to juice the lemons that we zested last week. So does anybody have any questions? I love answering your questions. Um, how many of you have been to a destination wedding like that? And did you like it? Because I have to say, I loved the experience. We just, the company was great. 
everybody had a great time. And, um, and I love not having to worry about when to leave. I love that my husband didn't say to me, come on, let's go. I love that the people that we were with at our table didn't leave early. Hey, Frank, how are you? And I love that I could do what I love most in the whole world besides cooking, which is dance. So we really had a great time. I met some fun, fun, fun people. I loved meeting the family. So, I mean, you're either in one camp or the other. I will meet people at a wedding that I didn't know, and then I will send Christmas cards to them for the rest of my life and stay in touch with them. That's just who I am. My husband doesn't know who's at the wedding. So we're very different like that. As I say, when he and I get into an elevator to go up 12 stories, by the time we get to the 12th story, I've made two new friends that I'll keep for life. And my husband gets off the elevator and doesn't even know anybody was on the elevator with us. So that's like the difference between our two personalities. So, but he had two very good friends there. So he had a very, very good time. Maybe too much of a good time, but we had a, we had a great time. Okay, so now we are going to juice one full lemon. So if you remember this, this lemon, Teresa said yes, took a bus to some remote location outside of Las Vegas and had a great time. Don't you love it, Teresa? I do, I really did. Okay, so now we're gonna add this lemon. We're gonna juice it. And let me, let's see if I'm going to lower this just a little bit to give myself more room here. And I'm going to just juice one full lemon right in here. There you go. Now we zested this lemon last week for whatever recipe we used. I can't remember what we did last week now, but we used this lemon. I put them in Ziploc bags because if you don't keep them in Ziploc bags, if you, they will get hard. The skins will get hard like rocks once you zest them. So you have to put them in a Ziploc to keep them moist. And so, okay, there's one half. My favorite way to juice a lemon or orange or lime. And these, Go right in, I love how this works. Okay, so we're gonna throw in a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper along with this and then we'll mix it up one last time and we will stick it in the mold and cover it with a cheesecloth and then cover it with plastic wrap to keep it um, from drying out all too much. So there we go. Okay, so we're gonna raise this up. We're gonna turn this on starting slow. Get that lemon juice mixed in. And then we're going to turn it back. And there we go. Okay. All right. So that's, that's it, gang. That's how easy that was. And let's take this off. There's still some zest and some cream left in here. So let's... Knock this off. Okay, don't make the mess that I'm making. It's going everywhere. Okay. Let's pull this out. There we go. Now I can properly pound this off. There we go. Getting all that zest off of this. We don't want to waste that zest. It's so hearty. Okay, there we go. So my kitchen has been taken apart, my outdoor kitchen, uh, because there was a problem with the countertop, as you know, I mentioned it, and they are putting it back together tonight, and it looks like tomorrow or Wednesday, all the equipment will be back in, it will all be a memory, so I'm very excited. And then, guess what we're doing? We are starting the kitchen. We are going to start making plans and getting bids to demo this kitchen. And boy, let me tell you, it is not a minute too soon. Because my top oven stopped working two years ago. Um, it doesn't broil anymore. And my bottom oven is not um, roasting any more convection. So I'm telling you, my microwave went out. I've just had a heck of a time when I tell you. I'm like, how is it that Nanny Bubby could have problems with her ovens and her microwave? That is just not right. So we've agreed it is time to go inside now that we're done with the outside. We started by painting the house, finishing the backyard, and um, waiting. Our bar stools came in. We're just waiting for the seat covers. 
and that will be completely, the backyard will be completely done and we're pushing on the inside. So I'm really, really excited. Where am I going to do the show while they're demoing my kitchen? Good question. Were you thinking that? <laughs> I was thinking that, but I have the outdoor kitchen, so we'll do it there. We might have to do it at 10 in the morning because it's really hot out, but we shall see. Hopefully this kitchen doesn't take 15 months and seven contractors to complete the way that um, the way that the outdoor did. But I, I don't think so. We, we had good experiences and learned a lot. So are you ready? This is what we're going to do. We're going to just take this. Let me turn you around here. And let's push this into the curla creme mold with the cheesecloth. There we go. I wish I could show you this where you could see it. We're going to smooth the top. And when this comes out tomorrow, it will be very dry, much like making ricotta cheese in its own way. And uh, it will lose all of the water the way that, that the ricotta cheese did. And um, it is just a beautiful and tasty mold. And I'll be very happy to serve this to our friends and guests tomorrow night. Okay. There we go. So now just let's, Let's push this so that you can see it. There we go. All right, so we're just gonna take this and let's see, Megan, do you know where the saran wrap is? Maybe it's on the shelf right when you walk in. Okay, so Megan, is she's been such a great help. I love having her. Okay, so this is now smoothed on top. I just wanna show you that. It's flat, it's smooth. I'm just gonna wipe this down Get it in there. It's right in front, right in front of you when you walk through that door on the shelf, straight ahead, next to the aluminum foil in the bags. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna fold the cheesecloth right over the top, like that, and fold it in. Okay, that will keep it. And then we are going to cover this with um, with saran. Now you could see. This is just a very deep bowl. That way the bottom doesn't hit and that will keep this nice and able to drain. Tomorrow, when we pull it out, it's gonna pull out perfectly out of that cheesecloth. And so I'll show you that tomorrow. You'll come back tomorrow and I'll show you how that works. And now we're just gonna cover this with saran just to keep some of that moisture in. And ah, uh, I forgot the salt and pepper. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> I think it'll be okay. All right, it's too late. All right, there's a question for all of you. So you've just done what I've just done and then you discover you forgot the salt and pepper. So there's the question, how do you manage that? What do you do? What, what would you do if you were me right now before I put it back in the refrigerator? Let me see, what do you think I should do? Any suggestions? I'll, I'll set it aside and see what you guys say. I'm going to go ahead and grab my salmon that I'm making tonight. Here it is, right here. And I'm going to salt and pepper this. And let's see, anybody? What would you do? What would you do? So I'm going to take the salt. There we go. And the pepper, nobody has an answer or there's just a big delay, right? There's a little bit of pepper. On top of this, I'm going to zest another lemon and get that zest in there. Um, hold on, whoops. Boy, I'm having a heck of a day. I'm tripping and I'm dropping knives on my foot. Here we go. Anybody yet? Anybody have any idea? Okay. I think you need it with all of the herbs. Okay. So what do you think? Maybe just sprinkle on the top. I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking, what if I just opened it up and literally mixed it in the sieve? I'm thinking that's the way to go. What do you guys think? Put in the salt 
and the pepper on the top and then literally just stick the spatula down in there and um, and mix it. What do you guys think? I mean, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, uh, let's see. Did you buy a wild caught? Bye. See you tomorrow. Oh, looks beautiful. Oh, go ahead. Open the door. Can you open the door for him? Hurry. Don't let him go. The guy installing the... Sorry, guys. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Not to worry about it. Looks beautiful. Looks absolutely beautiful. I can't wait. Yes, gorgeous. Big difference, right? Okay. Okay, whenever you want. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Meg, Megan, tell them if they want to take a water, to take a water. Just ask them if they want to take a water. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, I'm working from home here, so, you know, this is what happens. Okay, so we've got this lemon zest going right on top of the salmon. And so they were hoping to be farther along today so that I might be able to use it tomorrow. And the braces that are holding the top on. But wait till you see it. When I show it to you tomorrow or the next day, you're just going to love it. Okay. So now I'm just going to take all of these herbs, combine them together. Right here, you can see this. All the herbs that I had um, that we are using for the Corilla Creme. And I'm just going to take these. I mix them all up like this. And I'm going to add some of the oregano, the dried oregano in there. There we go, and mix them up. And now I'm just gonna sprinkle these right on top. You see that? There we go. Okay, so now that Antonio is gone, let me get back to reading what all of you said. So hold on just a minute. Give me one second, and let's see what the final verdict is on what I should do about the salt and pepper and the curly creme. So, okay. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to uh, take this vegetable stock. Um, hey, Sue Rainish, nice to see you. And then I'm just going to pour this on the outside, and what that's going to do is just, while roasting in the oven, it's also going to poach it. And the skin is off the back. So it actually works great. Okay, so now that is ready for tonight's dinner. Let me move this over here. And let me get back and see what my gatherers have given me as advice. So let's see. What do you say? Okay, did you buy wild or caught or farm raised? So I always um, go for the wild caught. I will never buy farm raised anywhere but Whole Foods. But we actually like the farm raised at Whole Foods until you get into the summer and some of the wild fish is better, not been frozen and then re, you know, opened. Um, and uh, so we buy the farm raised at Whole Foods. It's it's got more flavor, it's fattier, and they assure me that it is under their standards, it's very healthy. So we're choosing to believe that because my husband likes it better. So okay, let's see. Um, Laura says, yeah, I am not sure what she's saying. Yes. Yeah. To. So let's see, maybe just sprinkle on top. And I, I don't think you need it with all of the herbs. Oh, I thought you said, I thought I needed it with all of the herbs. So I misread that Teresa at the beginning, um, and hope it soaks in. I don't know. Let, don't need it. I'm feeling like I do because I feel like when I read you saying with all the herbs, maybe it needs salt. I kind of feel like it does. So let's try it. I, I know, Teresa, I misread what you said, but it made me think about it. And I actually agreed with what I thought you said. So let's open this back up. I don't know about that. Don't need it. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? Here's another, here's another good call. I know it just looked too, it looked too perfect, guys. Look at this. I feel like if I just went in and just started mixing it, it might not be I don't know. What do you think, Megan? I think you should leave it. You think I should leave it? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I am going to leave it. I agree. And this is how I'm going to manage it tomorrow when I put it out. 
I'm going to sprinkle it with um, coarse sea salt on top. How's that sound, guys? Coarse sea salt on top and, um, and a little bit of cracked pepper on the top. And then when you take those first bites, that's what you'll taste. So that's it. That's the curla creme. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator now and let it start draining. I'm going to turn on my oven, 425 degrees right now, and I'm going to roast the salmon for dinner tonight. I'm making on the side some rice cauliflower. I'm going to run out and get the chard, which is way overgrown in my garden, and uh, dice up the chard so that I can put it in the rice cauliflower. And, um, and that's it. So that's my Monday. Happy to be back. You know, I love getting away. We had so much fun, but boy, at the end, when you dance until two in the morning, you're exhausted. So um, I was exhausted. Happy to be home. Happy to do the laundry, if you could imagine. Um, and we ate on the way home. So believe it or not, last night I was not looking forward to cooking. So we made do while we were out. And driving in St. George, we stopped and had a nice little snack. And that's it. So love you all so much. Tomorrow, I am going to finish making the gnocchi that we made last week, which by the way, that's what we use the lemon for, if you remember. And so uh, I am going to pull that gnocchi out of the freezer and we are going to make a sauteed brown Brussels sprout. And then we're going to brown the gnocchi and then we'll pull it all together. And so tomorrow night, I was testing recipes with you guys last week. I'm gonna make that halibut with the uh, double tomato uh, topping with the smoked mozzarella on it. Uh, and the um, pico de gallo that I added to it, different than when we put it on a crostini, but just adding that pico de gallo really made a difference. I'm going to be making the halibut for dinner, and uh, we're making um, a big salad, I think. Oh, and the Brussels sprouts are the uh, vegetable along with the gnocchi, so we're getting a combination of both. And that's it. So I'll, I'll show you how I make that sauteed gnocchi instead of boiling it and it's so delicious i can't wait to share it with you so that's it for today i hope wherever you are wherever you're watching you'll join me in saying one two three go out and spread love like butter bye everybody thank you for joining me see you tomorrow 3 p.m <laughs>